Unknowing Citizens, and welcome to Unknown. I'm Jason McClellan. Thanks for hanging out with me. Unidentified, Inside America's UFO Investigation, the new UFO show on history, brought to us by Tom DeLong and his team of military, government, and aerospace insiders at To The Stars Academy, aired its third episode on Friday, June 14th. Today, we'll once again provide a brief recap of this episode, followed by individual thoughts and opinions. But first, let's get some announcements out of the way. week of Alien Con Los Angeles has arrived. Alien Con takes place June 21st through the 23rd at the Los Angeles Convention Center in Los Angeles, California. Ryan Sprague and I are either presenting or participating in a wide range of programming at Alien Con LA. You can check out thealiencon.com for the event's full schedule and all the important details. If you haven't grabbed your tickets yet, use the code UNKNOWN and you'll receive 10% off your ticket purchase. And the Rogue Planet team will be hanging out at Alien Con all weekend. And we'd love to see you if you're going to be there. We'll be at the Scum and Villainy Cantina in Hollywood on the night of Friday, June 21st, as part of a larger Alien Con podcast mega meetup, which starts at 7 p.m. Check out the Rogue Planet Facebook group for more information about the meetup. We hope to see you at Alien Con. All right. Let's get into our unidentified conversation. First, here's a brief recap of what episode three of Unidentified showed us. In episode two, we met radar specialist Kevin Day, who reportedly observed hundreds of UFOs on radar back during the 2004 Nimitz UFO incident. And he provided Lou Elizondo with the coordinates to where Kevin says he saw these UFOs disappear from radar. In episode three, Lou meets up with Sean Cahill, who was aboard the USS Princeton during the 2004 incident. The two travel to Baja, California in Mexico, where they talk with local fishermen about UFO sightings and USO sightings as well. Now, if you're not familiar with the term USO, USO is essentially a UFO in the water, and this can either refer to just strange objects that are in the water, And sometimes they refer to UFOs that dive into the water. UFOs become USOs. But if you'd like to learn more about USOs, I highly recommend looking into the work of Paul Stonehill. Paul's done a fantastic job researching this topic. So just search for Paul Stonehill, and he's got some incredible information about USOs. Back to Unidentified. The team then takes a boat out to Guadalupe Island, the location where Kevin Day says the UFOs disappeared from his scopes. Lou and Sean speak with fishermen near the island about their UFO sightings, and they ultimately meet up with a marine biologist who shares a personal sighting as well. The UFO sightings from all these fishermen highlighted on the episode share similar characteristics to the Nimitz Tic Tac UFO. Although the physical descriptions varied, the movements of the object were somewhat similar. And the episode really tries to make all these sightings somehow related to the Nimitz case. There's also a noticeable focus on the term hotspots in this episode. Hotspots are essentially an area with an unusually high concentration of UFO sightings. And not surprisingly, yet again, we hear plenty in this episode about the stigma surrounding the UFO topic and Lou's desire to destigmatize the topic of UFOs, get rid of that ridicule factor, so people, especially military personnel, feel comfortable reporting and talking about UFOs. There were a couple things I really liked seeing in this episode. First, what I just mentioned, the continued recognition of the ridicule factor, and the focus on explaining why it's important to lessen that stigma around this topic in order for us to research it properly and, hopefully, understand it better. Second, 
I appreciated Lou stating that 99% of UFO sightings are explainable. Although I personally think that number is more in the 90-95% to range, I love hearing that emphasized because it's so important to keep that in mind when it comes to researching and investigating UFO cases. Additionally, I appreciated the attempt, no matter how limited or brief they were, to explore conventional explanations and look for possible scientific explanations for the reported sightings. One thing I did find intriguing in this episode was related to comments made by Lou Elizondo. He reiterated that he can't talk about what they did or what he learned while working in the Pentagon's UFO program known as ATIP, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, because what they worked on is still classified and because he signed a non-disclosure agreement. However, as he's done on previous episodes, he brought up the five observables, these extraordinary logic-defying capabilities most commonly associated with unidentified aerial phenomena sightings that were created by ATIP. He can talk about these, apparently, but nothing else. He also said something else interesting, that at ATIP, he could only interview military personnel, not civilians. I found that curious because from previous information we've heard about ATIP and the work it performed, we've been told that civilians were a big part of it. Civilians were the ones who claimed to be in possession of UFO material. Civilians are among those who were studied when the group was researching possible health effects associated with proximity to UFOs. And many, if not most, of the people involved with the project were government contractors, civilians, not military personnel. So hopefully we get some clarification on that issue in the future. But overall, episode three was fun. I enjoyed some of the issues raised. And it was cool to see big shot political consultant John Podesta make another appearance. We'll see where the show takes us in the next episode. Well, citizens, as we wrap up this brief episode, I invite you to come join us in the Rogue Planet Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Rogue Planet. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the third episode of Unidentified or anything else UFO related that's on your mind. Just a quick heads up, we won't be publishing a new episode next week because the Rogue Planet team will be busy at AlienCon. So we'll cover two episodes of Unidentified the following week. And of course will tell you all about AlienCon. You can find more episodes of Unknown on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Subscribe on your favorite podcast provider so you're notified when we publish new episodes. And if you haven't already done it already, please do us a big favor and take a minute to rate and review Unknown on your favorite podcast platform. You can always find this show at RoguePlanet.tv because Unknown is a Rogue Planet production. RoguePlanet.tv is your home for all the strange. Big thanks to our talented friend and fellow Rogue Planeteer, Caleb Hanks, for the show's intro and outro music. Check out all his work at theclerkchronicles.com. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I'm Jason McClellan. Do me a favor, friends. Always treat the UFO subject with the cautious and responsible skepticism it deserves. Question everything. Have the courage to form your own opinions. Keep truth as the focus of your quest, even if the truth conflicts with your opinions. And, of course, stay strange. Stay strange.